All right, what's up, y'all? We are here with another video talking about React Springs and how to use its animating features with our React components. In the last video I made, we talked about use transition, which we're going to be actually using again, except this time we're going to talk about a little bit more higher level stuff with the use of use transition, and we're going to see how we can make our component pages transition inside of our routes. So. Um, if you're not familiar with routes and React Router DOM, we have some videos on that in our curriculum you can check out. But ultimately, it's a very simple React application we're working with here. I'm using React Router DOM to render like component pages, so to speak, where I have a page one, two, three, and four, where I can click on a nav bar. It matches a route in my URL bar, like slash two, the home route, slash three when I click on it. And it just renders a component page to the screen. And our goal today will be to use React Springs and use Transition and some other higher level stuff to have the component page fade out to the left as the next one fades in from the right and centers into the screen here. This is all done with some basic bootstrap styling and I'm gonna attempt to not write any custom CSS as I don't like doing so if I don't have to for these demos. So uh, let's go ahead and dive on in with our code here. I have a very simple, uh, let's start in a package JSON. So just like the other day, the other video, we have our React, or React Spring library installed. I've also went ahead and installed React Router DOM and I have my bootstrap installation as well. So React Router DOM is gonna give us those DOM bindings for React Router so we can write a set of routes that when a URL is matched as a path, it renders a specific component. That's the that's the gist of it, if you've never encountered React Router DOM before. And if you guys have questions, let me know. I'll be happy to make extra videos on that as well. So inside of my index.js, this is where I have my bootstrap imported from node modules. So it filters down to the entirety of my app. Now I've chosen to import browser router here and wrap my app. Uh, we can also be using browser router inside of app. If you don't wanna do this, it's just gonna require an extra step and we'll get to that shortly here. So that's all my index.js looks like. My browser router is wrapping the entirety of my app to give it some context we're gonna need earlier, or later in this demo. Inside of my app is where I have my very simple set of components. I have React imported, I have my switch and my route imported. I have a couple of components imported ready for use and my app itself is just a basic functional component. I use the shadow fragment to make sure I'm exporting one parent level component where I have my navbar component right over here. I have my bootstrap container fluid where my switch is listening for these route changes. So whenever one of these is matched in the URL bar, that is the component it loads. So looking at those components are all very simple. They're nothing more than just a bunch of divs with some bootstrap styling on them to make the screens look kind of nice. And the only thing that's really different about all these guys is just the text of the H4 saying, I'm page one, two, three, four, etc. The nav, the nav bar over here is, uh, you know, nothing, nothing spectacular. It's a functional component with some bootstrap classes and styling. And I use these nav links because it allows me to say when a certain path is matched in the URL bar, I want the nav links to dynamically switch their class name. So I have a class name and active class name. So if I'm on exactly the home route, it will use these active class names where I just literally add the active class name for bootstrap for that link. That's how I get the effect of when I click on one of these guys, it essentially becomes the active page link and the rest of them dim out and go back to the hover effect that Bootstrap provides for me. That's what the nav links are doing there. Nothing fancy and actually this is gonna be all done. Nothing else is gonna happen here. So we're done with nav bar. We're gonna come and talk about this absolute wrapper we're gonna be using here in a minute. That component itself is nothing more than just a div that renders its props.children, which I've destructured because we're gonna be adding some logic here. And if you guys have questions about this method, let me know. We could just as easily add an extra div here or add the class names here that I need to fix a problem we're gonna encounter later. But I just wanna show you all something, something cool we can do if you haven't encountered this before. So let's dive on into what we're gonna do here. I am going to have to make a use transition and the use transition, just like from React Springs, we're gonna go ahead and import and prepare those. So we're gonna import, import, use transition and the animated divs element we're gonna be using here from the React Springs library. I keep calling it React Springs. It's supposed to be React Springs, so sorry I keep calling it plural when it's not. I'm also gonna be importing something you might not have recognized or seen before, something called under underscore router 
context from React Router DOM. And it's actually coming from React Router, I believe. And we're going to import also a new API, hook, or hooks API called Use Context. And Use Context is going to be our hook for the context API that is provided by the React library. Uh, we're also going to be using this router context as the context we're going to be using. So if you guys recall the old way of higher order components, if app needs to know location, match, and history, which is what browser router provides to us, uh, it's not a rendered component in a route, so it's not going to have those props. But if we need to know those props, we could do a with router higher order component wrap, and now app would know what the props of location, match, and history are. But the functional component, um, you know, the functional, the push for functional components with hooks API. Uh, it's trying to get around this problem because sometimes you would have like several wrapped components. If we had like Stripe, for example, we might have to have something like injected Stripe form is wrapping app, which is being wrapped by with router, and it become a mess of higher order components. So we're going to avoid that technique here, and we're going to be using the context API, specifically the use context hook API instead. And that context will be whatever our browser router provides via this import right here. So right off the bat, I'm going to go ahead and just make a const, and we're going to be using ES6 destructuring because we want the location out of the router context. We want to know this location right now, like where are we on our router. And that is going to come from our use context hook call, and we're going to say, hey, use whatever router context provides. Now, if you guys are curious, you can most certainly be console logging router context, location, see what this guy provides, mess around with it, and you'll see what it is. But location is nothing more than an object with a couple bits of information on it that we're going to be passing down to our switch and our uh, use transition here in just a second. So we want to know this location object. And we're just using some ES6 destructuring to just pull off location immediately from what this provides for us. After that, we're going to have to be making our transitions here. So we're going to say uh, const transitions. If you recall from the last video, this is going to be producing an array of transitions that we're going to be mapping through that will provide the location and key context for this stuff. So we're going to be mapping through our location object, creating transitions, rather, of our location object. That's the amount of length we need here. For each location, we're going to give it a key here of location.pathName will be our key. And the object for our transition where we can type in our uh, transition effects we want here. We're going to be wanting a from category. And unlike the other video, we're going to have both an enter object and a leave object. So like I had mentioned, I want these transition routes to fade in from a certain side, go to a certain position when they enter, and then leave and fade again once they're leaving the screen here. So all of these guys will have an opacity, because it's going to be coming from an opacity of 0 to an opacity of 1, and also be leaving with an opacity of 0. So that'll be providing that fade in effect, fade to total view, and then fade out of view after the fact. We're going to be talking about one more particular CSS property called transform that can take a translate function that can take uh, one or more arguments. And this is where I'm going to say, hey, come from 100%. And I think this actually needs to be a string now that I think about it. So translate, uh, come from 100% from the right side and do nothing on the vertical side. So translate is a uh, function that can take two positions here, an x and a y coordinate, I believe, saying, you know, translate from here to here. So that's what it's doing for, like translate from this position. And this is like from the right side, horizontal, and this is zero for vertical. We don't want this thing sliding up and down on us. We want it sliding left and right. I'm going to copy this little guy here and paste it for my from enter and leave. And so it's going to be zero, zero, essentially. So I want it to translate on enter when it gets to its position to the original position. No, no percent translation, just nothing. And then I want it to fade about halfway out of the screen on the left hand side as it's leaving. So it kind of gives us this like nice smooth transition effect here. And that should be just about it what we need there. I should have, um, yeah, I can have this link in the description going to other MDN or W3 schools talking about what transform is as a CSS property, how it works. We can do some 2D or 3D transformations with several different types of translates. So there's things we can do called scales, rotates, transform 3Ds, 
skews, and this is the this is the uh, property I'm using myself here, where we're using translate x and y. So we're saying we're just using x. I want to have it slide in and then fade out. Essentially, that's what we're going for. So that's where I got that property from. Um, on top of that, with the use context hook, I'll have this documentation or this article rather how use context works. If you are curious, it's a bit more high level stuff that would actually necessitate probably another video entirely. And I'll also have a Medium article talking about how that under underscore router context is working and how it allows us to get over and around that old school, um, you know, higher order component wrapping we had to work with here. And then, like I had mentioned, with our location object, it's just an object that has some values on it here. I realize that text is insanely small. Sorry about that, y'all. Where it has this information on it, and that's where we're getting that path name as the key of our transition array. That's what we're doing here. And as you saw, our switch, in this case, it might not ne be necessary. However, our switch does have a prop called location, which we can pass that location object to. That way, rather than looking through the current browser URL to match a history location, we can be passing it a manual location to be matching instead. So that'll actually be useful if your switch aren't using exacts or your routes are all using exacts like mine are. We're going to go ahead and prepare and, you know, we're going to be passing the location object as an item into this uh, location for the uh, for the switches props. Okay, that being said, oh, like back to it here. Let's jump back into it and actually use our transitions. So we need to go ahead and inside of my container fluid, I'm going to be using this transitions dot map like we did in the last video, where the arguments for this map and I'll be doing an implicit return here. The arguments we're going to be destructuring from this transition array will be our just like the other video, our item props and key, just like that. And we're going to be doing an implicit return inside of here with our animated element dot div. So I want to enter a new space there. Inside of here, this guy needs to have a key, which we've destructured from our transition array. It also needs to have a set of styles, which is provided to us by prop, which, you know, you can always uh, pop in here and console log these values if you're curious what they are and where they're coming from. But props is the taking this JavaScript and translating it to the necessary CSS to pass as a style object into this animated div and how it executes it for us. And that should about wrap it up for the animated div. And I could just as easily take this switch, cut it, paste it into the animated div. And here is where I'm going to tell my switch, hey, you're going to have a location object I want you to match to, which will be my item coming from my transition array. Because we passed in the location context into this use transition function that gave us the array that has that value in there. Now, because I have these exacts down here, it should be totally fine. But if you have a bigger and like bigger scale project that has some dynamic pathing and things like that, you're going to want to pass this location prop in and pass in the location object itself to make sure it's matching correctly. And with that, it should start doing some transitioning for us if I haven't made a typo here of some kind, but you're going to notice one problem. So coming back to my page here with bated breath, let's check out what it does. Page two. Hey, well, it does. Okay, so page two fades in, you know, fades to the left like we wanted to about halfway through the screen. From the total right side of the screen, the next component loads in. But you notice this issue here where uh, it's simultaneously loading these two components, and they're kind of like sharing the space, so to speak. I don't want it to do that because, like, this component will execute its leave callback, essentially, which is what that transition leave here is, is say, hey, execute this. But it still exists in the DOM, and it still takes up a block level row, since these guys are all a bunch of divs, right? So this doesn't look, I mean, maybe you want this, but it doesn't look super hot, you know? So what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of CSS magic, and I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to do it by writing CSS, I'm going to be doing it with my bootstrapping. So what I'm going to tell these components to do is I'm going to absolutely position them to the top left of the screen. And I'm gonna use that position absolute. We can do a width 100 with just raw CSS, but I think position absolute and width 100 should be just enough for Bootstrap to know what to do without breaking my component structure here, or my component styling rather. So let's see if we can't fix this problem with that. And that's why I made that particular file, absolute wrapper. This is gonna be a div that's going to wrap our component pages here. So let's go ahead and fill out the logic here. Well, I'm going to say, hey, you're going to have a class name of position-absolute, which is a boot, <laughs> absolute, there we go, which is a bootstrap 
class name I'm going to take advantage of. And because it's going to be positioning absolutely, it's going to break all of my row column styling. So I need to make sure to also pass in this with 100 bootstrap class to make sure that these absolutely positioned divs aren't breaking in their row and column styling. And it's just going to be wrapping whatever my code is and rendering all of its props.children. So all we need to do now is on all of my pages, I have these imports ready to go, is go ahead and just wrap these guys with my absolute wrapper and we should be good to go. And like I said, we could have just as easily just come in here and added the class names on this section right here, this div, but I wanna show you all this cool kind of technique right here because some of my students haven't seen this before or they see it online, ask questions about it. So I figured this is a good place in the video to show off a very simple example of how you can make your own custom components that wrap and render something in between them. So let's go ahead and finish up what we were doing here on all these component pages, absolute wrapper. All right. And three. And one more here coming up. Nothing like some good old copying and pasting. All right. Now, everything is now positioned absolute with 100. Shouldn't break all this styling because I'm using Bootstrap. It's actually easier to do this if you're using custom CSS. I had to maintain all my Bootstrap stuff. And we have our app ready to go. We know the transitions were working, but the components were stacking vertically, and we want them to stack on top of each other with that absolute CSS rule. So now with that redone, the component should have reloaded, and check it out. We are good to go, y'all. How sick is that? We have some awesome component loading transition effects with some fade and slide in based on a nav bar clicking and some routes matching and loading the components with their wrapping animated divs. We have a pretty fly looking web page here and now I could build out these component pages to be a bit more than just having a div that says I am page number. So like this could be, you know, your portfolio site that you have this awesome fade transition between your pages on your portfolio site that will make your portfolio kind of be, you know, an a little tier above a lot of standard ones out there that might have some static page rendering. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Hit us up in the Covalence Discord server, and I'll be happy to help answer. And if you have any further questions on React Spring, watch out for more videos on React Animating I'll be putting out. And also let me know anything you guys are hunting, and I'll happily try and sink my teeth into it and figure out how to do it for you guys. Other than that, you'll have a great one.